I mean, while here in Nairobi, independent aspirants are meeting in Kasarani. Let's now bring in our reporter, Timothy Etienne, for an update. Timothy has been following up on that meeting for the better part of the day. Timothy, what has come out of this meeting so far? Well, Michelle, we are still anticipating, of course, the official launch of the Kenya Alliance of Independent Candidates that is set to take place here at the Boma, at the Kasarani Indo Arena. Uh, as you can see, most of them have since gathered here. They are waiting, of course, uh, to be led by none other than the Kiambu governor, William Kabogo, who yesterday, a few days ago had uh, indicated that he is going to be throwing his heart back into the ring as an independent can candidate seeking re-election for the Kiambu gubernatorial seat. The IEBC has already cleared 4,500 independent candidates to vie for various elective positions come August the 8th, the highest number of I independent candidates in the country's political history. And that high number has to some extent caused a, a logistical nightmare for the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. Nonetheless, they say they will be prepared to have the names of these individuals behind me on the ballot come August the 8th. But of course now I am joined by one independent candidate. Of course, this is a familiar face on our screens, former Nakada boss, uh, John Mutudo, who is seeking the gubernatorial position for Nakuru County as an independent candidate. Thank you so much for speaking to KTN News. Perhaps let's begin with today's event. What should Kenyans expect from the Kenya Alliance of Independent Candidates? What they expect is, first of all, a big shock. That we are 4,500. That means we are bigger, we are bigger than both Jubilee and NASA combined in terms of numbers. Politics is all about numbers, nothing more. If you ignore such a number, this is at your peril. We believe we are going to do not less than 40, 50 percent of all the seats, and that is power. There is power in the numbers. That's why we are here. Number two, the independent candidates you are seeing here are those ones who are pro Uhuru. Pro Uhuru. The others who are pro other people, they are also meeting at the various positions. So the pro Uhuru group, as like you can see here, is numbering well over three, four thousand people. And if you take that each would have about 300 uh, followers, then you can know the kind of numbers we are talking about. The other one is that we would like to have a very peaceful election. We are expecting to have a very, very hostile reaction from uh, the other parties. But we want to have calm down. Independence of mind should be a very successful kind of uh, thing. We don't want uh, any, or any one of us to be a victim of... Uh, the various bodies are dealing with the security. We don't want to hear that any member has been caught in any, in, in, in a, any misconduct because independence comes with the responsibility. Independence comes with the responsibility. That's why we are here. And the high number of independent candidates, um, some would say, plays on us to the fact that party primaries may have failed in the obligation of upholding democracy. You did participate in the Jubilee nominations for Nakuru County. And many say most of these independent candidates are, as a, are people who are disgruntled and refuse to accept the idea that perhaps the, po the public may not want you in elected office. Do you subscribe to that kind of thought? And what do you tell such people then? I, I want to tell them that uh, for the first time now, the party the party bosses have been challenged to reality. There were no nominations anywhere in the country. Call it NASA, call it uh, Jubilee, call it anybody. It was just a group of thug, a group of thugs organized themselves into a very systematic way of forcing their way all the way to the institutions. One such institution, I suppose, is a parliament. If 250 members of parliament bribe their way by their way up to the August House. What kind of laws do you expect? What kind of oversight do you expect? What kind of uh, legislative framework do you expect out of this? What we are trying to do here is something very commendable, that we are going to cut short all those uh, hitchhikers who are, who are using their money to force their way into institutions like Parliament, uh, into Council of Governors and the others. For once, there will be sanity now in Kenya. And also the excesses from the party bosses. 
these party bosses sometimes behave funny. You wake up one morning, you say, this guy lands without even going for competitive politics. You come here, you are branded, you are onto the boss, and then you are done. The but party bosses now will have to look at somebody in the eyes, look at the qualification, look at the track record, and that's it. So this is the best thing in democracy. And let me remind you, even in the US and other democracies, people have become president from independent candidates, prime ministers, and so forth. Thank you so much, Bonam Tudor, for talking to KTN News. We certainly wish you all the best. He says they are going independent to tame the excesses of party bosses and party politics. Will they be able to, of course, become victorious come August the 8th? Is the country even prepared uh, for perhaps a parliament that consists of a high number of independent candidates? Could it be a constitutional crisis in the making? IBC says it, there is no headache. They are gathering here today to officially launch a coalition that is pro Uhuru Ruto. They are going to be endorsing President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto for re-election, 4,500 of them. Nonetheless, even as we wait for that announcement from William Kabogo and his team, we're going to be keeping tabs here for you uh, throughout the day here on KTN News, Michelle. All right.